Hi everyone, Netta Anisari from OTAN here to support Carl Haley from CK12. We love our partnership with CK12 and we're so happy they've entered the adult learning space. So um, that's all I have for now, but I will be here to support Carl and I will be monitoring the Q&A and I'm just gonna repeat what Carl said. Please, if you have any questions and we want you, we hope you have questions, type them in the Q&A box. And if you have any comments, um, concerns or anything like that, comments to each other in the chat box, but really the questions that we're going to be reading um, and addressing will be in the Q&A. Thank you so much. Great. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. My goal for you today is that you get a nice overview of what CK12 offers and how you can start using it with your, your learners right now. You know, all of us are kind of going through uncharted waters here, and, and some people have been using some of the, the before, including CK12, but many people haven't had that opportunity yet. And so kind of quickly here, you're trying to get up to speed. So my goal today is I'm going to show you an overview of what we offer, how you can use it with your students, and then what some next steps will be for you if you'd like to learn more about CK12. So we start out with this slide here. Um, the CK12 Foundation is a leading nonprofit organization dedicated to improving learning by increasing access to ex educational materials through the Flexbook 2.0 platform and concept-based modalities. So the idea here is we were established simply to give all learners in the world quality content. And you shouldn't have to have $150 to be able to learn chemistry, to be able to afford a chemistry you know, book, some content. So that's where we started from. We started 12 years ago and um, Last year alone, we had over 30 million people come to our website to learn. And we're really proud of that now. Um, and we, you know, and over the last few weeks here, as more and more people have begun to dive into online learning by necessity, we, you know, of course, we've seen some really great things happening on our website. So we welcome you. And we're glad that OTAN is a partner with us because we feel like we work well together. We both have similar missions. Our goals are the same. We want all of our learners to learn and to get access to the, exactly the right content. So let's move on. I have turned on the um, captions at the bottom of the screen. Um, so you will see what I say. There's no punctuation there and it's a little, little funky to read, but it is one of the newer features available on um, Google Slides. So we appreciate the work those people do at Google. So CK12's content is made by the same place, by the same people that um, make all the big publishers content. I used to work at Pearson, and before that I was a mathematician, and I, the same people I hired at Pearson as consultants and subject matter experts are the people that we've worked with here at CK12. So it's a very similar process of where our content comes from. The one benefit, and we'll talk more about this, is that CK12 allows you, the user, if you want, to continue to customize the content. It's not locked down. We open it up and we let you use our content and change our content however you want. And the other wonderful thing about CK12 is it's accessible by any device that has a browser. So whether that's your laptop or your computer or your tablet or even your smartphone, CK12's content can, you know, your, your learners can work with CK12 on whatever device they have. And this makes it really, really usable. And sometimes I've even seen it where a learner might be answering questions on CK12 on their smartphone, but they still have access to the lesson on their Chromebook, for example. So accessibility is a really important thing that we've worked hard on so that everyone has access to it. As long as you have a browser, you simply type in ck12.org and you're on our learning platform. All right, so what does CK12 offer? We have our Flexbook 2.0 platform, which I will show you. And we also have concept-based learning. And what this is, is you take a concept like Pythagorean theorem in mathematics. We have a bunch of content using a variety of modalities, different ways of learning. We offer all of these together so that a student or a learner might want to watch a video before they go read academic text in a lesson, 
or they might want to do an interactive before they watch a video or, you know, they, depending on kind of where they are that day, they might need a different approach. And so the benefit of CK-12's concept-based learning is that indeed they have some choices there. Another one of our things that is really kind of taken off is our adaptive practice. And we'll, we'll mention this again later, but the idea with the adaptive practice is that our system in the first three questions, asking questions to the learner, will, it, will figure out where the student is and then builds on that foundation with them. And we know some students are still exploring a concept and haven't mastered it. But other students are near the top and need kind of the harder, higher end questions there. So CK-12 uses the power of machine learning and, and uh, um, in artificial intelligence to make sure that each student's getting exactly what they want. I've also mentioned that CK-12 has some great digital interactives and simulations. We'll show you how to set up your classes and either on the CK-12 site or integrating to an LMS like Google Classroom, for example. And finally, I'll show you what the next steps are. Where you, if you wanna learn more, we have a bunch of professional development that's available on the CK-12 site. Of course, it's all for free. All right, so one of the pages you might wanna to go to right now is ck12.org slash overview. And this will show you kind of an overview of the variety of resources that we offer. As you can see here, we have Flexbooks where we offer complete courses in um, available mostly in math and science, but you'll see too that our users have developed other subjects like history, world history, economics, et cetera. And I'll show you how to find that. And then of course, all videos and interactives that we've put together. So it all comes together on one platform. Students can learn, uh, learn here, and then we inter integrate with various um, learning management systems. And I'm just going to throw out there again, if you haven't discovered the Q&A window yet, go ahead. And as you're thinking about stuff like how you might use it, I know you're just thinking about it for the first time, but use that Q&A window and Netta and I will be happy to answer questions. As, as they pop up in your head, please do click on the Q&A button and then it put, type your question right there. Okay, so um, Cara, uh, Carl, I do have, um, remember the questions, um, if you can please put them in the Q&A box. Um, also, uh, I do want to, before we proceed, when you're looking at CK-12, I want you to put on your high school diploma teacher hat on. I want you to put on your high school equivalency teacher hat on because really these resources are going to help you with assisting your students in high school equivalency and high school diploma. Okay, so I mean you could definitely use them with ESL students when you're looking at this, but know that this is very much secondary ed. So you're going to you're going to see subjects that really address your math needs, really address your science needs, English writing, social studies, and so much more, and, and Carl will go over that, but just keep that in mind as we're going through this webinar. Um, Carl, there are some questions. Is there a training on computer? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I'm interested in ESL adaptation, so we'll talk about that maybe a little bit with our English. Um, are the Flexbooks considered OER? Yes. O educational resources, they yes, are. Yeah, for sure. Yes. I'm an adult ed CTE nurse assistant teacher. Okay, we'll talk about what that might look like. Um, so if you're kind of, if you're, if your learners are doing basic level mathematics, you might want to take a look at our um, uh, math seven, math six and math eight books. And we'll talk, we'll show you how to get there. But the key way to get to all of our Flexbooks is using our Flexbooks browse page, ck12.org slash FB browse. We also have the ability to find out what other schools and districts have done on CK-12 by using our schools page at ck12.org slash schools. And I believe Ned is going to share this um, presentation with you after a little bit. And these are all, these links of course are all in the presentation. Um, but let's move forward. All right, so we also have as I mentioned, non-STEM books and community contributed books. So we have 
started now with so many different areas like economics, geography, government, world history, philosophy, photography. These are all courses that people have developed on CK12 and through the spirit of open educational resources are now sharing with everybody. So a lot of our district partners have made up their own books. Like here's an example from, um, we have some, some history from CK12, but also EPISD, which is El Paso Independent School District, has created some really outstanding books that, you know, if you teach history, you might want to look at. And the benefit of CK12 is you can take their book and you can click the customize button and you can make it exactly what you need it to be in the right order with exactly the right content. So one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to learn on CK12 is how to go to the search bar. So up in the corner, you're gonna find that you can search within specific areas, or you can search, for example, of all over CK12, and it's gonna bring up everything like, for example, Moon here brought up, you know, there's a concept page. We talked about that where you have a variety of modalities teaching the same idea. So there'll be lessons there, our adaptive practice, videos, activities, study aids, real world applications, a variety of things all on one page, helping the learner figure out this concept. And then you can also find out where that concept is in one of our flexbooks. So you'll find the search results to be really useful. And I, I also encourage you to use some of the filters off to the side. You might want to just see, for example, flex books that contain the moon in it. Like you want to limit your search to that or just real world applications. But our search is really powerful. and We've spent a lot of time this year making it much better. So I think you'll find some really great things by starting in the search bar and typing in a concept. You can also search within a Flexbook. When you're in a Flexbook, there's a search bar and you can, like within the algebra book, you might search for Pythagorean theorem and you can see all the lessons that appear in that Flexbook that are about the Pythagorean theorem. And this is just to help you find exactly the content that you're looking for. One of the most important things that I like sharing with uh, people using CK12 is on the homepage, there's an explore button right here. And you might want to go to ck12.org right now and click on the explore button and really take a look at what are the resources that we offer. Because this is your kind of one-stop shopping where you can see, oh yeah, I want to go and check out CK12's Flexbooks 2.0, our original Flexbooks, find out what schools um, are sharing their content. We have some great study guides, et cetera. Other things that I'll point out are the cafe. The CK12 The Cafe is a place where um, educators and learners both meet and discuss topics. They answer questions and it's, it's a really great forum for asking questions and sharing ideas. If you as an educator are interested in becoming a CK12 certified educator, we do have a whole program for that. As you become more familiar with CK12, you might find it beneficial to do our certification program to learn more about how to use this great tool. And finally, from the Explore menu, it's a great portal to get into our webinars page. If you enjoyed learning today and as part of this OTAN webinar, you can continue the learning by joining CK12's webinars. And I'll even throw out there today, um, we, are, we do live sessions now, and those happen every day at 1130 on science. And then at one o'clock, we do daily office hours, which is a new thing since the coronavirus started, and where we answer questions live on the air, where you don't even have to send an email to our um, uh, to our support team, yeah, we, the support, the outbound team answers questions right there and you can learn from other people's questions. And I'll share information on how to, how to join the office hours later. Do you want to, you want to take some questions? Carl? Let's take some questions, Netta. Okay. So Jen Smith is asking, uh, can it be adapted for adult basic education classes? And so I'll take that one. Um, right now, I, I if you, when you're looking at the CK12 website and you're looking at subject areas, I encourage you to look at the math by level. So for those adult basic education classes, know that there is math from grade one through five, six, seven, eight. There's algebra, um, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, 
um, and then also by subject area, math by subject, so arithmetic, measurement, algebra, etc. Um, so that immediately is what jumps at me when I see adult basic education and really kind of focusing in on the math. Um, also, for English, you have writing and spelling. So take a look at the K-12 subjects and that will really answer your question for adult basic education classes and what can be offered for those students. Yeah. Anything to add, Carl? Yeah, and I'm just going to say if you're logged in as a teacher on CK-12, um, you can see here that we have a breadth of like these are all things that we've either developed ourselves or we have worked with a specific partner to develop. So you, this is kind of from our homepage. This is a great kind of starting point to get into a, your specific um, area. And once again, this is that great explore menu, you know, that you can click into and really have access to the best of CK12 there. Good. All right, our next question is from an anonymous attendee and that says, how seamless um, is the interface with Canvas? Great question. So we actually work well with Canvas and Schoology and with Google Classroom. With both Schoology and Canvas, you enter through an app installed on your Canvas or your Schoology, okay? So you'll, you'll enter through the Canvas program and CK12 is an option to be added into there. You'll wanna contact your system administrator. I will use this time now to offer help here. We have a really great help button at the top. So an example of this is if you don't see the CK12 app in your Canvas, we have the instructions here under administrators and IT. So installing CK12 in Canvas. And there's all the information you need to get it going there. And then you'll see that you'll end up with a Canvas app that does it. And then once it's installed, then you can go ahead and as a teacher, you're gonna find some information on using uh, Canvas, uh, here it is, how to create assignments in Canvas. So all of this is in our help screen and really can get you started. The other thing that I'll point out now that we're live on the site is on the webinars page, you're gonna find a webinar about using Canvas. And we're actually gonna do another one very soon. I think it, we might see it advertised right now. Uh, let's see here, strategies, there we go. So Canvas and Schoology is a live webinar that's coming up on Tuesday, April 7th. But if you want more information before then, we already have an archive version. If you keep scrolling down, you're gonna find archive versions. And here's an LMS breakout, CK12 and Canvas and Schoology. And you're gonna see exactly what it looks like to use CK12 from within Canvas. Great, um, that also addresses Bertha, your question um, in your district, you're using Schoology. So I encourage you to look at that webinar, Canvas and Schoology. Um, then we have a question from Kim Walker that says, are, are these lessons aligned with state standards or to the state standards? Yeah, so what happens is, you know, we, we are based in Palo Alto, California. And so a lot of what we've written has to do with what is needed in the United States. Now with, um, with the Common Core, there's obviously a lot of focus toward that. And they've all been written for Common Core. But then a lot of schools internationally have taken our content and just with a few changes in customization, they're able to fully address their needs. So yes, we have taken Common Core and NGSS in, in mind when we've developed our content. And beyond that though, if you feel like something's miss missing or is, is not emphasized enough because it's customizable, you can quickly add that in. Great, and I'll take one more and then we can move on and then we'll answer some more as we go along. But um, the next one is, does CK12 offer digital textbooks? And the answer is... <laughs> Lots of them. And what I'm gonna encourage you to do from our homepage here, I'm gonna encourage you to go take a look at our Flexbook 2.0. We introduced the Flexbook 2.0 platform about a year and a half ago, and you'll see some information about it here. But most importantly, you're gonna find some great resources. And I know that it does say for middle school, but this is your basic math skills here, which are aligned to Common Core. And then finally, for example, we have uh, you know, the high school secondary level kind of stuff that you can access for your learners. Um, 
this might be a good time to stop and let's go into a CK12 flexbook so you can see what it's about because this is what we are known for. We are known for our, our interactive digital textbooks called flexbooks. So let's go inside of this one and you'll notice as we soon as we get here, we're going to see a table of contents with some very familiar units and then we can open up the units and, and we can find a um, you know, we can find the lessons and the lessons are essentially concepts. So I'm going to go into one and, you know, the, we have a start button button for the lesson, but we also have, if the student's not, or the learner's not ready to begin reading academic text or interacting with the lesson, they might want to go do an interactive first or read a different lesson that's maybe a, a simpler level. So those are some options before we get started, but let's go look at a very typical lesson in CK12. And you can see here, I've already used this lesson and done some highlighting. We have some highlighting and annotation tools up there, but it tells us what we're gonna learn here and we're using an algebraic equation is what we're studying here. The difference that you're gonna find with the CK12 lesson that is really important when your students are not in your classroom is you have the ability, they have the ability to go interact with a variety of interactives and then they answer questions about them. So for example, I'm gonna go answer this one here, and I answered very well, I guessed correctly, and I, I'm given feedback on each one of my answers. So on this question, not only does it tell me I didn't get it right, but it tells me why it's not right. And you know, when our, when our learners aren't physically with us, we need them to be able to get over like the little tiny hurdles without, using the teacher as a resource necessarily. So CK12's uh, content and flexbooks have these great features which help the learners learn without necessarily having a teacher right there. And I know in adult education, this is really important that this, the, the learner needs to be able to make progress on their own. So you can see in this lesson, we have one, two, three interactives, four interactives with questions, and then each, each one ends with a practice session. And as I mentioned, this is our secret sauce. This is where um, the learners will get to go practice. Think of this as soccer practice, where um, they go in and their goal is to get 10 of them correct. So I've already done this before and I, I've done one question, but I'm going to start answering here and I didn't get that one right and then I'm going to try typing this. Let's say I did that. Um, still didn't get it right. So it's identifying that I'm at the beginning skill level and my goal is to get 10 correct. All of our questions have hints which will help the learners get the correct answer. So this is where when you've assigned this lesson to your learners, you will get feedback on what they've done. And you even can see the questions that they missed and get information like that, how long they spent on the lesson, lots of information if you assign from the Flexbook 2.0 platform. So I'm gonna stop this for now just to continue our overview here, but I wanted to kind of get you into one of the books. Now, as I mentioned, we have a lot of great additional resources available and one of them is this Teacher Insights. And with Teacher Insights, if you select a class that you've assigned this to, you will get information on how each one of your learners is doing. What skill level are they at? And then even it'll show you how much time they spent on the lesson and also where they spent time on the lesson. Did they watch the video? Did they, you know, they spent 10 minutes on the lesson, but where in this lesson did they spend it? Did they do this interactive? So we have a way of doing a histogram off to the side, which can show you exactly where they spent the time on the lesson. So CK12 has a bunch of Flexbooks. And like I said, the, the thing that's most important is you use the ones from the Flexbook 2.0 platform, because that's where all of our new intelligence is happening. And we've really fought hard on what would benefit the learner and what would help educators be better teachers. So we are providing all the content that you need so that you can really figure out what's best for each one of your learners. So we're going to jump back into my presentation for, for a second and then um, can yes. you um, can you answer uh, one of the questions is can the flexbook be downloaded yes 
think of it. So let's go back to this question, uh, this here. Um, we're in this lesson here. And the problem that we have is when some of it, so much of this is interactive, if we, to, if we download it and have an offline version, then we lose all that kind of intelligence and interactivity. But yes, if you make your own version of the book, meaning that you come to the first page and you'll, you can customize a version for yourself, then you'll see an option to download a PDF. And if you need PDFs, that's the way you can easily do it. PDFs are available, but remember none of the videos show up in the PDF and none of the interactives or the interactive practice isn't there either. So it's kind of a, a, a very basic version of our Flexbooks. All right, so let's go back in, into here. And so I'm on this lesson now, and let's say this is exactly, I am a physical science teacher and or part of my science program. I have some physical science concepts and I want to assign this to my learners. There's an assign button right there that I click and it assigns the lesson and the adaptive practice. Um, and then you get to choose, are you gonna assign it to a class on CK12, or are you gonna assign it to your classes that you've already rostered in Google Classroom if you use Google Classroom? If you're doing it from within Canvas or Schoology, as I've mentioned, that needs to happen from within the Schoology program or within the Schoology can, uh, Canvas program. So you won't see those clickable items here, but it's very easy from the CK12 site to assign to a CK12 class, and Google Classroom. And you simply kind of choose which classes that you've already set up, and then you know, a start date and then a due date. And then when they finish it, they click on the turn it in button, the learner does, and that sends the scores back to the, um, to the teacher. So that's, it's really how it works pretty easily. And then the really nice thing is you have access to these um, heat maps, which really show students that are struggling or, you know, where the student is with their progress on each one of the assignments. And you can see here, these are, um, this is a practice that nobody's done yet, but it's maybe they still have yet to do it. But you know, you can see the scores here and even off to the right for each student, you have the ability to look at where they are on that assignment and then which questions they got right. Like, because it's adaptive, not every student gets the same questions. So this student quickly answered two easy questions and four medium, and then they did four out of seven hard questions correct for a total of 10 questions correct out of a total of 13 questions that they attempted. So there's a lot of great information here, and we have webinars to teach you each part that we're talking about. We have webinars that show you how to use a Flexbook or how to customize a Flexbook or how to use our adaptive practice. So what I want you to do right now is just kind of absorb this. And I know for many of us, you know, there's so much new technology that we're having to learn in a very short time. But just know that these are tools that are available to you and that can really help you be a good distance kind of educator. So this is what I was talking about. When you're in a lesson, you click on a student that you've assigned the lesson to and it can tell you exactly how many minutes they've spent on the lesson and then where they are. And you can see this student, Ryan, is still exploring, meaning they haven't reached mastery or proficiency. And then off to the side here on the histogram, you can see exactly how many minutes or seconds they spent on each part of the lesson. And some teachers need this to sometimes help learners figure out where are they struggling and that this is the information you need between seeing their answers on the practice and the other insights that we offer can really help you, the, the educator, help your, help your learners. All right, so Netta, let's pause now and let's get some more um, questions answered here. Okay, great. Um, there are a couple of questions from Gloria and Kim about the integration into Google Classroom. Sure. So, so you know us yeah. how to sign into Google Classroom. Yeah, so you will, you saw in that one moment there that we were, right, let's go back here. Um, this one here. Uh, let's present here. I think it'll come up. So if I click assign, 
you've got an option to connect to Google Classroom. And if you click on that, it'll make you log in with your Google Classroom credentials and it will connect automatically all of your students and learners in Google Classroom and they appear on CK12. So it's, it's that simple and your, and your learners don't have to do any separate login to CK12. Whatever credentials they use for Google Classroom will automatically log them into CK12. And as always, as I mentioned before, if you want to get more help on Google Classroom, I suggest you go over here and you type, you know, Google Classroom here and you're going to see um, down here using Google Classroom, creating assignments, you know, how they're scored, FAQs. So there's a lot of great information. And of course, like Schoology and um, like uh, Canvas, we have a whole webinar about Google Classroom. And I'm just going to go to the bottom of the page here, click webinars, and you're going to see it would probably behoove you to watch the Google Classroom and see somebody do it so that you are more comfortable with it. And I'm just going to scroll down. Once again, we have a live first if you want to wait till then. But today, after this webinar, you can come down here and you can watch a CK12 in Google Classroom 36-minute um, video that really focuses on getting you started. Thank you, Carl. We have a question that says, do you need to create an account to use all that is offered? Yes, the, I, the, the bottom line is yes, you do. Because, because of like whether you're an, a teacher or whether you're a learner, we want to be able to provide to you the best um, experience. And so for learners, that means we need to help you figure out what do you know and what don't you know. And if every time you show up and we don't know what you've done previously, it's much harder for our platform to help you. So, you know, signing up is actually quite easy. All you have to do is use, a, you can create a username and a password. You don't even need an, an email. But if you already have an email, you can sign in with your Google credentials or your Microsoft credentials or your Facebook credentials. But it helps us be able to tailor exactly the best learning environment for you if we have you log in every time. Some of our participants want to see the writing and spelling that's offered, and they're asking, is there reading um, offered as well for English? Sure. So we have not, see, at CK12 here, you, you can see writing. You can come here to the home page and click on what we have here. We have a composition um, uh, flexbook. We have something on journal, journalism, and we have a writing method called the Glyphata method. And, but beyond that, for example, if you want to search on CK12 for reading, type that in. First thing you're going to see is all the content that CK12 has done. And then more importantly, I think, is click on Community Contributed tab here, and you're going to see all the content that has been developed by our users. And I'm going to look just at the Flexbooks that have, um, you know, that people have made. And you're going to see a variety, and a lot of them are still, so here's a uh, reading six flexbook, and that could possibly be a, a flexbook that was used um, for sixth grade middle school students. But go through here and find things, even though CK12 didn't develop it, I still have the ability, like I'm going to go inside of here and let's take a look at to see what it is. Um, so here it's a whole reading, you know, book and I'm going to go, the really nice thing is I'm like, you know what, I think I could probably use some of this. And the really cool thing is, because it's CK12, I can come in here and I can customize it. So I can change this now. I thank my friends at CCPS, whoever they are. I'm going to take that and I'm going to put Haley's reading, um, reading uh, flexbook. And then I've got my own flexbook and I can take out the stuff that I don't want. Like for example, this um, if by uh, Rudyard Kipling, I'm going to take that out. I'm never going to use that. So I can, I can move things around. I'm going to start with this conversation on fiction versus nonfiction. So, you know, just know that you have the ability to do all those kinds of things. Great. So Artana, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing names um, wrong. Uh, I, it says, I'm assuming that we need a license as a school or a district to access CK-12. Am I right? You are not right. It is, <laughs> you can go access it today. The good news is we share everything using this Creative Commons license. Creative Commons, and the only thing that we ask you to do is we ask you to give us credit, 
That's the by part standing for by CK12 attribution. And then the last thing, NC is non-commercial. We ask, since we gave it to you for free, please don't sell it, okay? But other than that, if you promise that you will abide by those rules, you can start using it today. There's no license, there's no contract. It's simply we want to help you and we want to help your learners. Great. Um, there is an anonymous attendee asking, OTAN, has anybody um, curated any ABE material um, for a class? And so I do have an answer for that. I will put my email address in the chat. Um, definitely email me. I have a teacher working um, from Baldwin Park uh, Adult School that could uh, possibly share or find help us find what's available and what she's created um, but also what what we can create together moving forward so and yeah, then Nena, I just want to reiterate that I would love to end up after this hard work that you're all doing right now to end up with an adult learning page where, yes. we, put, where we highlight all the great work that, and the content that you've put together specifically for adult learners so please let Netta know or let me know directly if you are interested in that because I know so many of you have created outstanding content and to be able to share that among the adult learning community would be really wonderful. Right. You got to come together and create that um, adult material so that we can have our page on CK12 and we're very excited for that. We have a couple in the um, chat that are excited about that as well. So thank you. I will definitely share our email addresses and we'll work together on this. Um, the question, the next question is when customizing, is it possible to add a Word or a Google Doc? Um, let's, the, the, the answer is yes, but understand that we use HTML5. And I don't want to complicate things here, but Google, like the way that Google doesn't have all the features that Word has, we don't have features that Word and Google have because we want to be able to be viewable on any device. So we use HTML5 to make that happen. So if you, if you have content, like for example, I've been working with a school down in Grossmont, down in the San Diego area, and they are taking content that they've developed in Google Docs and turning them into CK12 lessons. And so, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a best practices I can share with you, you know, you can write us at CK12 and we can, we can help you out with that. It is possible to do that, no problem. I mean, it's just text and words and pictures and links like that, of course, can be done. It's just that there's, we, there's no direct one button click because of the, the CK12's editor doesn't have all the features that Google has or even fewer features that Word has. Okay. And Tim is asking um, that he uses Odyssey Wear to help his students with high set tests. Um, some students need help in one area. Can he incorporate a lesson into Odyssey Wear? Can he link it to one section, a lesson or a unit rather than the whole entire book? Absolutely. So let's say there's a lesson that you find here on CK12 that you're like, oh, my, my learners would really benefit. Like I'll pull a one out of our Algebra 1 book here. So you have probably the best way that I would encourage you to do this is you need to be able to assign this. And so you could just put a link if you wanted to. You, this is a URL here for this lesson, inverse of functions. So I could copy that and I could paste that as a link in your high set program. But more importantly, it would be good to get feedback from the CK12 system on how your learners did. And if you want the feedback, you have to assign it either through CK12 or through Google Classroom or one of our LMS providers. Okay, so you might want to set up your, your students on here so that you can assign it to them or use an existing class that's in Google Classroom. Great. Um, so we, let's see here, do you expect to add more CTE content? And this is asked by Connie Williams. And uh, Carl, I'm going to just ask everyone to look at those subject areas under CK12 and really look at some of those sciences and how they fit into CTE. I mean, if this, and then I'm talking more like CNA, medical assisting, and if you really need to target any of those science particular um, content. But then I'm sure, Carl, is there anything specific for CTE or in the community, in the CK12 community? I, tell me what CTE stands for. Oh, I'm sorry, career technical education. Career technical education. Yeah, so um, what I would do is I would type in, for example, career 
And while CK, well, we have a little technology career. Yeah, we've got some things on this that you can go look at those lessons. But I always like looking what our community has done because on kind of stuff that really has, they've developed themselves. So I'm gonna go look at some flex books here that people, so here's career awareness. They, so you'll be amazed. Here we go. Here's as part of the GCE Algebra One Flexbook, they talk about careers, you know, and here's some, some more, you know, things that they've developed. So I encourage you to use that search bar and then use the filters to really help you find content. We've had over 300,000 Flexbooks created on CK12. Many of these are just versions of our, our books, but a lot of people have brought their own content in too. So I encourage you to use that search bar to find things like careers that you're interested in. Yeah, and I could see anatomy and health science careers. Um, so within that community contributed tab, you can see human biology and so on. You can see that there are others that have worked on some flex books and created for different careers. And, and I'll, Ned, I'll just add here, once again, if you like this, you can add it to a Flexbook that you already have. You can take all this content and add it in, and, or you can add in specific lessons. So we really try to make it easy for people to share existing content because we, you know, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We don't want teachers to have to reinvent the wheel either. Right. So um, a bunch of questions are coming in after that, and they want to know if there's anything on computer basics, a certified nursing assistant. So we do definitely um, encourage you to use that search button and look at what's available currently or what's community contributed. Um, I also want to encourage you to use that community contributed when you're looking at like high school equivalency HSC particular um, subjects because there are others in the con com community contributed that are looking at um, GED, high set, and so on. So if you're looking for CTE flex books that have already been created, if you're looking for um, high school equivalency, GED, high set, definitely use that um, uh, search, search bar that Carl was just on. So this is what I wanted to talk to you. I briefly showed you how simple it is to take anyone's book, whether it's a CK12 Flexbook 2.0, or you take somebody else's, you know, uh, careers book that you just saw. On any of those, you, you have a pull down menu somewhere and in, in, like on the Flexbook 2.0 platform, it's under the choose menu and you can customize this book. Once you click customize, then you're in control of exactly what that book is and or you can actually add it to an existing book that you've already been working on. But this is kind of the wonderful thing about CK12 is like sometimes you only need a little part of something. So grab that little part and add it into your, your flex book. Um, and you can choose which book that you're going to add it into. Um, we offer within the CK12 classes a Q&A feature if you need the ability, especially, you know, I'm not sure all of us are using a learning management system, but CK12 offers you a, a basic learning management system. So for example, you could ask a question as part of a lesson with your learners and they can answer right there in the CK12 class. So, you know, use this feature. There's a lot of great, you can also share resources and, you know, depending on what, what you need and how far you are along the technology road. But we try to offer you valuable things that will make it easier to do your teaching. One of the other things that we haven't discussed yet is that when you're on a lesson in CK12, we at the bottom of the page offer to select a different language and have immediate translation into um, a different language from Google. So you'll take a look here and obviously Spanish is a very popular one. The Spanish translations have gotten very good. Google uses kind of a crowdsourcing idea where people help make the translations better and the, the, they've gotten a lot of great feedback about the Spanish. I have heard that the Arabic is not great yet and they need more people to use it because it, um, it it, it just doesn't quite work as well. Um, I also heard that Kazakhstan, from Kazakhstan the other day, that the Google translation is not great. But, um, you know, try this out. It's wonderful where I've seen where learners have their home language on their phone and they can view the lesson that you have assigned on their phone while looking at the English version of the lesson on their Chromebook. 
and this is a very, very popular way. And then it's building academic language in English while offering them access to the content through their home language. All right, so you can see what could you do next. And I think, you know, we've done a big overview here and there's so much to learn that, you know, we, we try breaking it down. And I think the first thing you should try doing, just sign in. Like go ahead and use your Google credentials or any email and password and get on the site. Then use that search bar like I showed you to kind of find content that you want. You don't have to find a whole book just find some lessons this week that you're teaching or next week that you're teaching and give it a try and you can assign to a class that you set up on the ck12 site or you can assign it to classes that are already set up in google classroom or canvas or school um, and then once it's assigned your students will be notified and then you can see how they did. How did they do on the adaptive practice? And then you can get feedback on what that experience was like on them. But this is really a good next step for you to be thinking about is finding a lesson and then assigning it to your learners and see how that goes, see how that is for them. Remember that we've offered, we, we offer a lot of support. So one of them is the help desk that I showed you. Um, and then the other one is our webinars. And we have so many webinars that really try to meet your needs. Like what is it you need? You need to find out more about Google Classroom. We've got a webinar for that, you know, and join our, our, our live office hours. And I have a slide coming up after this about that. Of course, you can always email us at support at ck12.org. And that will get you a person answering your question, usually within 24 hours. We have seen larger than average load volumes with uh, questions, and so it might take a slightly little longer, but our support team works hard to get your questions answered to get you moving along. And then as we talked about here, um, have the goal that maybe down the road, you're gonna create a flexbook for a course that you, that you teach and then see how that goes. Make sure you know, you can, you're in control of putting it in the right order, in the right sequence, having exactly the lessons that you need. And you can bring in content that you've developed or other OER content that you have access to. Then the best part of that is sharing CK12 with others who would benefit from these resources. Netta and I have long talked about setting up this adult learners page, and we would love to make that happen using Flexbooks that you create. So please help us make this dream come true and create content on CK12, make sure that OTAN knows about it so that we can put together a page specifically to help adult learners. Great, all right, so we have a few questions. Tim is asking, how long does it, does it take to get the certification, the CK12 certification? Sure, let me, while I'm, before I leave the presentation on the, for the moment, I'm just going to point out these are our live office hours every day this week, probably the same time next week, we're going to confirm that, but um, tinyurl.com slash ck12live gets you into our live Zoom meeting, and you can ask questions just like you're doing now. We have our staff available today. Katie's um, going to be answering questions, and I think I'm doing it again tomorrow. And so please stop by our live office hours. If any questions that you have, now that we've planted some seeds, Ned and I have planted seeds in your head about how you might be able to benefit by using CK12. Um, so let's go now and take a look at um, more about the certification process. So let's go down to the bottom of the page. You're going to see this under support is the uh, Certified Educator Program. And we've recently retooled the program. You can find a little video here about it. But um, what, you're, what is gonna happen now is you're gonna do three live webinars and you're gonna do two on-demand sessions and five matching assignments. And we, you know, this used to happen over a week or two in the summer, but now we're offering it throughout the year. And so, and we're offering more and more live webinars because of so many teachers dealing with um, distance learning now are having, are wanting to find out more. So I, today is in, we're in March, you know, we are, can, almost weekly we have webinars and you can see that, um, that those webinars will fulfill these three live webinar 
uh, requirements and they they're on specific topics and so you you can register here and you can see you know exactly what you're gonna what you're gonna get out of the program so register here find out more information or you can send questions to our support about it specifically Great. We have a few other questions here. So uh, Gloria asked, um, I see you can download lessons. Um, can you download the entire book? I know I did it before, but it seems that now you can only download lessons at a time versus the entire book. Is yes. that it's no, no, you can download the entire book. Let's go do it. The key thing though, is that you, you need to make your own copy of the book. Okay. So if you want the whole biology book, for example, and you want it just as a reference, then what you do here is you have to customize it. And once you have customized it to your, you know, yourself and it's in your library, then any book in your library that you've customized, you'll see a download PDF under this choose menu. And you can do the whole book. I know I have a bunch of questions here regarding ESL, so English as a second language and um, addressing the learner needs there. Um, so, I, I'm going to try to answer, um, I teach ESL at two different adult schools. I teach intermediate high, advanced at one school, and beginning at another. Can I manage both classes on one account, or do I need to sign up twice with two different school email addresses? Um, it's kind of up to you. You can decide how you're going to, um, you know, how you're going to manage that. I suggest always set up different classes, at least, for each site. But it's not necessary that you use a separate email address. If I were doing it, I'd just pick one of them and use that always. And just let my students know if there might be a moment where they need to know that, but you're going to sign them up, whether it's through Google Classroom or not. And so, you know, like the, the main thing is separate the students into separate classes. You know, when you've got CK12 classes up here, you know, you can set up, if you're setting them up on CK12, you're going to create a different class for, um, for each one of your sites. Right. Okay. So Catherine, I know you're asking about adult learners or adult ESL. And so, you know, this, this content is good content for any adult learner. Um, adult ESL, I'm, I'm curious to see what you think uh, for the ESL population, how advanced this is for that group. Um, I would imagine the intermediate and the advanced level ESL students can do a lot um, on um, CK-12, but I don't want to limit our beginning students at all if there's something that they can also utilize from CK-12 and the material on CK-12, and I'll be curious. Um, I don't know, Carl, if you hear anything about ELA in the K-12 world and what they're using CK-12 for and how it's been in that community, and if you can talk about that and just put on your, I mean, the English language learner, if they're in the K-12 system or in the adult ed system, um, there are ways we can definitely engage them in CK-12. Absolutely, and what happens often, so, you know, obviously we, I've gone into an earth science um, middle school level, so grade six, seven, eight, which does the academic language used in these books is lower than the ones from the high school, you know, subjects in science. So you will find a simpler, you know, academic language here. Um, we do offer, of course, um, you know, you can connect through these are all linked to other ideas on ck12 as part of it i already show, showed you that you could select the language so they can go view this in their home language and maybe that and you know, if they have you know skills and reading and academic language in their home language this can be useful what i've also seen you know as we know that like sheltered or sheltered instruction is just good instruction. So if you feel like this, this lesson could be used, but maybe just needs a little scaffolding, go ahead and add, change this lesson and add the scaffolding in at the top, okay? And, you know, and really fit whatever tools that you're used to using with your ESL students, offer them those same tools through CK-12. And that's the way that I've seen a lot of, of, if teachers are gonna change something or improve something, that's the kind of thing they do. A lot of our learners too appreciate the fact that we have related content and they can go watch a video about this maybe before they start um, doing the lesson. So they get a little academic foundation on this concept. And then within um, YouTube, there's often the ability to have it 
translate the, uh, the closed caption. So there's a lot of possibilities here about that. The, the, you brought up ELA, and ELA is a hard one in theory um, for OER in general because a lot of what is written is copyrighted. So mm -hmm. if you can find content that is OER, which is Open Educational Resource, there is more and more content now available to be used in an ELA classroom where it's not copyrighted and you can't actually present it on the web. So just, you know, that's the only area that's been a little interesting for us to have to deal with is because of the copyright limitations. Okay, okay great, thank you. Um, so back to that uh, community contributed, uh, people want to know how to get to that page. Connie, I know you teach adults, so when you're looking at kind of CTE, career technical ed, I would strongly encourage, um, we're gonna go back to that, Carl, if you can, um, where they could find some community contributed material um, sure. that might be able to assist them in some of their CTE courses. Um, and yes, I understand you teach adults, Connie, but you know we're thinking, we're really hoping to move uh, forward with the adult ed page here at CK with CK12. So we want to definitely work together. I put um, Carl's uh, email address along with mine in the chat box. So definitely reach out and if you're interested in doing that, um, we would love to get that started with um, with a, group, a good group of us that's willing to um, contribute to that page. And I know Tim, in the uh, in the chat or in the Q&A, you've asked how do we coordinate and I put in the email addresses. So if you want to send me an email or, you know, CC me while you're sending it to Carl or the other way around, that's totally fine and we'll get started there. Um, so yes. And I'll just mention there, Netta, like I, I want you to understand that CK12 12 views you all as the experts in creating content for adult learners, okay? We have a great platform where we can support your work and we would love to take your expertise and get it represented on the site. So that's, that's kind of the partnership that we look for with um, um, our adult schools is that we want to be able to support you, but you guys are on the front lines. You understand exactly what your learners need and you understand what concept, content works and doesn't work. We are offering you the opportunity to, you know, put it all together on CK12 and then share it amongst your community. Great. Yeah, so the, can we go back to the community contributed tab and can you please tell me how to get there one more time? Um, also, there's a question about um, teaching computer basics and if there's, um, do you think that there would be uh, in the community contributed some computer basics? Yeah, I, I searched for computer, uh, computer basics, didn't see anything come up, but let's teach you all how to use the search bar once again, because that's the first step today. So go to ck12.org. Remember, you can always click on this icon to get there. And then in the search bar, we typed in career, I think is what we did last time. And it's gonna search all of CK12. The first things that you are presented are, is content that CK12s ourselves have developed. And you can see there's quite a bit here. Um, and then the other option is, here's the tab for community contributed. So when you do a search, you're offered content from CK12 or content from the community. And these are all individual lessons that we have, but you might also want to filter so you're just seeing Flexbook 2.0 or the old Flexbooks. So you can see here, like, uh, career. So you can see here that these are some things that our search engine has pulled from it, or we can go here to, all of our, our flex books and you know that's where we found that sixth grade career awareness etc so you you're going to find some great content and you might have to hunt and pet, you know pick us some things out here like not all of it's maybe going to be useful to you but there will be some nuggets of great content so i just wanted to do a real quick time check it is 1103 and we are happy to go over i want to address all questions, but I just wanted to make sure that I address the time real quick. In the con community contributed, Carl, is there any way you can search for high set materials? I know that, so high set is a brand of um, basically a, a high school equivalency test and a high school equivalency. Um, yeah. Yeah. Nothing's so, coming up. Nothing. So, but there is GED. If you typed in GED, I know that for a fact that there are some community contributed um, books, flex books uh, yeah, yeah. in the 
in for, for GED. So you definitely want to look at that. The question also asks in, in Spanish, are there high scent materials in Spanish? So, no, uh, go uh, ahead. Yeah, yeah. And I, I've actually pasted the GED search URL into the chat window. So if you want to go take a look at some of these, that's a direct way in. Yeah, we don't have anything specifically in Spanish, but of course, if I was to come in here for my GED Science Companion, I can choose to translate that and the student can translate any lessons that they need translated. Perfect. Thank you. Hey, what, is, um, what does CK-12 mean or what does the C in CK-12 mean? Well, there's a variety of answers on that. Because my name's Carl, I always say the C stands for Carl. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, but no, it's interesting because there's no one answer, uh, you know, content, community, uh, Carl. Uh, but I think that the answer the, that I cling to the most, our founder's originally from India, and K means learn in Hindi. So I think it's kind of a, a combination of learn and then K-12. So can I go ahead here and just finish up my, I have a couple more slides with just some great information for people. And then, oops, I'm clicking on the wrong button. And then, so we have these upcoming webinars, as I mentioned. Um, we've got one on Monday the 30th on customizing a CK-12 Flexbooks and the adaptive practice. So if this looks like something, a tool you can use, come join us live. You'll have the ability to ask questions there, but it will be about a one hour um, webinar about that. And then a week later, we have strategies for using CK-12. If you've you know, been wondering how to implement it, we give you a lot of different great ideas on doing that. Remember, this is all stored at ck12.org slash webinars. Um, Thank you. I really do appreciate all of you taking time. And I know that so many of us are, 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 are overwhelmed maybe at all that um, is changing right now. But CK12 is a partner with you and with OTAN. Reach out to us at support at ck12.org. If you are active on social media, we really appreciate um, a shout out. So if you liked today's webinar, please go to um, at CK12 Foundation and share with your communities what you learned, tag us, and it's really a great way. And if you haven't joined the, if you haven't joined Twitter especially, there's some really great hashtags that are about adult learning. Netta, do you have any to offer specifically that, that you follow in the adult learning community? Yeah, so there's hashtag adult edu. There's, um, of course, OTAN. There's um, um, EdTech. So I, I mean, if you're really interested in looking at some EdTech, but adult edu seems to be, oh, there it is. Thank you Thanks for typing that in the chat box. I appreciate it. Um, and it's OTAN, O-T-A-N. <laughs> oh, did I type it wrong? OTAN. Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. And I was sending it only to the panelist. I am sorry about that. That's right. That's there okay. Um, so uh, do we want to, do you want to address some of the other questions yes. online? Okay. So Patricia, I noticed you're still online, just confirming that you offer content in all grades K-12, correct? We do. And even beyond that too, you'll notice here, we, um, let's go back to the site. We now have um, some uh, college flex books that are used in community colleges. And you might take a look at the inter elementary and intermediate college algebra there, because those will be, it'll be content that is applicable for your learners. Perfect. Okay, so let's see, I'm gonna, possible adaptations here. Many ESL learners already have advanced degrees, but wanting vocabulary and fluency. Okay. So we definitely look at and search for what's in the community and what's have been, have been created there for vocabulary. Um, I would strongly, again, encourage um, everyone, and I don't know, Carl, if you have other um, ideas, but to search what's already out there for vocab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and just know that, for example, our science lessons all have of like vocabulary and vocabulary lists and things that are a part of what we offer. So it's a good way for your, for your learners to build academic language. Perhaps all e adult ESL teachers should um, form a group within CK12 to provide the skills content. I love that idea, Catherine. Yes, Carl and Nada both approve. Catherine, I love, love, love that idea. So let's do that. Let's do that. Remember my email address and Carl's email address is in the chat. 
Um, so yes, we will be um, submitting this or um, once we have the recording ready, we'll, it'll be posted because people want to write down some of the answers to the questions. So yes, thank you. Um, I teach high set and GED and this is super helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you for typing that. I appreciate it. Um, we have a lot of thanks. Thank you, Carl. Um, and Francis added English um, is in math problems might be challenging, but have phone translation can work with that. So, so that's yes. great. Great. I'm glad that they, yeah, are definitely finding some of those helpful. Well, and, can I just interrupt here? I yeah. love that the students now, or the learners all know they can point their camera in Google translation at something and it translates it on the fly into their language. And if you haven't seen that in action, have a learner explain that to you because they can, it works on signs and printed material and even stuff on the screen. They just hold their camera on their phone and literally they're seeing a translated version live. It's fantastic. Great. I think we're gonna hand it over um, to Melinda. Okay, I actually did a search on the OTAN website for CK-12 and look at all of these resources that we have um, on the CK-12. Now, I'm not going to do the full-blown CK-12 resources on OTAN that we had talked about the, earlier this morning uh, between staff because a lot of you are leaving and I want to catch you before you go. So if you come to the OTAN website, not if, but when, you're going to type CK-12. That's all you have to type. Hit enter and then you'll get the resources. Click on whichever you choose and, and get there. Yeah, I'm really um, excited if you are interested in joining um, Carl and myself in creating that adult ed page with CK12, please reach out and let's work on that together.